Welcome back, everyone. This is Dave from Corn Productions here to talk about The X-Files, Season 5, Episode 21, titled Chinga. The episode's description reads as follows. Rumors of witchcraft and sorcery surrounding a bizarre murderer at a supermarket in a small New England fishing town lead Scully, who's on vacation, to a little girl and a cursed doll that may be hiding a murderous presence. The episode was written by Stephen King and Chris Carter. Carter touched up on the script to make Mulder and Scully seem more like themselves, and despite co-writing the episode with King, he never actually met the man, which is pretty remarkable. King has 347 credits, a lot of which is credit on projects based on his work, uh, being the most prolific writer of all time, pretty much. According to the Internet Movie Database, the prospect of Stephen King writing for the series was first mooted during the show's third season when David Duchovny lost to King on the 1995 Celebrity Jeopardy Game 1. The episode was directed by Kim Manners. 37 directorial stints for him, including an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation uh, and seven episodes of Briscoe County Jr. He directed 51 episodes across all but the first season of the nine seasons, including the series finale. He did not return for the revival because by that point he had passed away. He was also a producer for every episode from season two through season nine. He died on January 25th, 2009. The episode originally aired on April 22nd, 1994. Before going any further, I'll tell you a couple of things. One, this is not a spoiler-free podcast. Uh, so if you haven't watched the episode, I highly recommend you go and check it out and then come give me a listen. Secondly, if you're listening to one of the platforms that this podcast is now available on, please follow and feel free to check out my YouTube channel, Corman Productions, where additional content can be discovered. If you're already on my YouTube channel, please like, share, and comment, and subscribe to my channel. Alright, so what we have here is a special bonus episode of The X-Files. This one is dropping for Halloween month, and the most natural episode that I could think of to do for Halloween month is an episode written by Stephen King himself. As far as the episode, it's a cute episode, probably an okay bill. This is mostly a Scully-centric episode, with Mulder only appearing in a handful of scenes. At this point, the show was getting experimental, doing off-the-wall things, such as getting Stephen King to write an episode. The episode begins in Maine with a little girl, Polly, and her doll in a car, while her mom starts to take her to go and get some gro groceries. Polly is played by Jennifer Lynn Hutchinson. She's got 10 credits. She's got three appearances on the series as different characters, this being the last of them. Her brother, Melissa, is played by Susanna Hoffman. 40, 46 credits for her, including an appearance on the Stephen King miniseries 112363. The pair keeps getting weird looks, including from a woman named Jane, who then exits the building, and that is significant, which causes her daughter to say she doesn't like the store. And this causes the doll to open her eyes to say, let's have fun. Melissa is clearly starting to panic as she makes her way around the store, and she sees an image of Dave the Butcher in one of the frozen storage units asking for help and looking very, very dead. All of a sudden, the store is going nuts as people grab their eyes. Dave the Butcher, who must be a small guy because, you know, his name is Dave, ends up stabbing himself in the face and credits. Welp, that, that opening certainly wasn't boring, that's for sure. The Butcher is played by Harrison Coe, who's appeared on the series before. None of the episodes in which he has appeared have I covered yet. This also happens to be his last appearance on the show, and what a way to go. I would love it if my last podcast featured an end where I stab myself in the face. I mean, as long as it's fake and not for realsies. When we come back, we have a lovely panning shot of the town into a gas station dressed casually. She's on vacation. But that's not going to stop Mulder from calling about a case. He gets himself quickly hung up on, and that's as it should be. As Scully drives, she stumbles upon the crime scene we saw at the beginning of the episode. She goes into the store, and people are all whimpering with bloody eyes. Scully tries to find out what happened from the manager, who is played by Gordon Tipple, who's shown up in the series twice in Season 1 episodes, Eve and Young at Heart, which I covered here. And she finds the butcher with the knife sticking out of his head. Scully calls Mulder at the office, who's spending his off weekend there watching something that sounds suspiciously like porn. You know, man, this is just sad, Mulder. I actually think it's not porn, but I think it's something else that kind of sounds like it at the moment, but it's not. 
She's of course calling him about the case and talking about how people were clawing their eyes out at a store. He thinks it might be sorcery or witchcraft. She doesn't see any of the signs and Mulder says she probably doesn't know what to look for. And Scully proceeds to name off a bunch of things that could be that she could be looking for that fit the criteria and nada. Man, she has spent way too much time with this man. Mulder proposes marriage after that, which she doesn't think is helpful at the current time. But maybe in the future, maybe? Scully notices Melissa on the tape being unaffected, and she is the only one. She suggests they talk to her, but she plans on continuing her vacation. The cops here, Jack and Buddy, are played by Larry Muser. He's the one who plays Jack, who also has four appearances on the series, including season three's popular Jose Chung's From Outer Space. In an appearance that was quite funny. That was actually a pretty memorable appearance for him. This is also his final appearance. Muser hasn't done any work since 2004, but he has 72 acting credits. But he is played by William McDonald. He's got 143 acting credits, including an appearance on Justin Hartley's show, Tracker. He has five appearances on this show, and if you're sensing the pattern here, this is the final one. He was quite busy in genre projects after this, however. Jack follows Scully and tells her that there are rumors that Melissa isn't back to a witch. I don't know, did you try throwing her off a cliff or drowning her to see if she dies? Apparently, Melissa had a relationship with the now dead Dave the Butcher. But he calls Melissa, he's telling her about the rumors of her involvement. He tells her Dave is dead, he wants to see her saying she needs a friend. And I highly suspect his motives here aren't exactly pure. But Melissa says he can't come here. Probably because she doesn't want Buddy to suffer the same fate. Scully and Jack go to visit Melissa. They don't get a response, but they go into her house and they find nails in the windows, but no sign of either Melissa or her daughter. Jack, after a long story, speculates that maybe she was afraid of getting out. And I think this is where we find out that uh, Father is dead. That we don't exactly get the details other than I think it was a boating accident. Melissa, meanwhile, has decided to meet up with Buddy and his daughter for ice cream. And yep, Buddy isn't exactly here to be a friend. She tries to explain the situation to him that she saw Dave before he died. Meanwhile, Polly is being bratty, demanding cherries from from a waitress. And she says no. The doll's eyes open and say, let's have fun. Oh, that is not good. The waitress is soon attacked by a blender. Melissa hightails it out of there with her daughter. Jack and Scully go to talk to Jane, who we saw at the beginning of this episode giving Melissa the side eye. And Jane thinks that Melissa is a witch having descended from the Hawthorns of Salem. She's otherwise not especially helpful during the course of this scene and this conversation. Jack tells Scully that this is the kind of public sentiment that they are up against when in regards to Melissa. But hey, this isn't Scully's problem. She's on vacation which is something she keeps repeating despite the fact that she's been actively involved in this investigation. Melissa is going to a cabin and gets stopped at some kind of checkpoint, but the doll's eyes open. She sees an image in her backyard of Jane, that would be the woman that we saw before, dying in her back view mirror. And we cut to Jane having a less than stellar time as she eventually seemingly kills herself by slitting her throat with a record. Well, that's going to lose its value now. But of course, selfishly, that is not a concern for Jane, because she's dead. Scully is relaxing in the tub when she gets a phone call that she ignores. But the person leaves a message. She opens her curtains to see Jack standing out there, outside of her apartment, or her hotel rather. Someone has a little crush, I think. Or perhaps someone else is dead. They go to the scene. Jack gets a call. And hey, it's Agent Mulder. The message, apparently, that was left was from Mulder. Big surprise there. And Mulder proposes a scientific explanation, saying maybe it's dancing sickness, which Scully points out hasn't been around since the Middle Ages. Mulder drinks from orange juice that expired in 1997. I gasped at this, but then I remembered it's 1998 for him, not 2024 as it is for me. Still, Mulder once again gets hung up on. But he hears the hokey pokey, and clearly knows something's up. Scully wants to open her thought process to the extreme possibilities. Meanwhile, Melissa and Polly are back at home, and we hear the hokey pokey playing. Melissa tries to sneak up on the sleeping kid, but the doll opens her eyes and says, let's have fun. She sees someone else dying now, 
and I can't tell who this is, but I'm guessing it's Buddy. Jack and Scully have a lobster lunch. Hmm, this seems kind of like a date to me. Jack points out the boat that Melissa's husband died on. She notices a man that was at the market. Buddy shows back up at Melissa's house, and this doesn't bode well for him. Scully talks to the man, and I believe this man is played by Henry Beckman, the actor from Squeeze and Tombs, making his final appearance on the series here. He explains how Melissa's husband died on the boat. He found the doll that Polly has been carrying around the entire episode. Her dad in the boat hears the let's have fun, and then suddenly he's found gruesomely dead. Mulder calls again. He suggests a viral infection, but she asks about objects that cause a human to be controlled, like perhaps a doll. And he makes a Chucky reference here, which is funny because the person who voiced Chucky, Brad Dorf, appeared on this series already in Beyond the Sea as Luther Lee Boggs. Mulder asks why she asks, and he suggests checking the back for string on it, which is how he got hung up on for the third time. We cut back to the Melissa house, but um, Buddy is very, very dead, and Polly wants her popcorn, not crackers though. Melissa is making the popcorn, but she is straight up not having a good time, bro. The doll's eyes open and says, let's have fun, and she sees an image, I think, of herself dead this time. Scully and Jack show up to Melissa's house and find Buddy's car. Looks like Melissa's gonna burn the house down. She's not responding to Jack. She gets a match to light. The doll's eyes open and blows it out. Scully tries to get into the house but finds it locked. She sees what's going on. The doll is preventing Melissa from doing anything, but it's cool with Melissa playing with a hammer. Scully and Jack get in and tell her to put the hammer down. Melissa starts beating herself with it. Scully goes and gets the doll out of Polly's hands and proceeds to microwave it to death, which stops Melissa from hitting herself. Mulder, back at the office, is sharpening pencils when Scully arrives back. She asks about the poster, the I Want to Bleed poster. She wants to know where he got it from so that she can send one to Jack. She asks if he was productive, and he claims he, he was, but he just has pencils stuck to the ceiling. And Internet Movie Database says... This marks the introductions of the pencils in the ceilings in Mulder's office, a sign of Mulder's boredom without Scully. They would feature in various episodes throughout the show's run. I specifically remember this from the I Want to Believe movie. We cut to a man pulling up to a trap and then finds a burnt doll that says it wants to play. Internet Movie Database says the original title was Chinga, but it was rejected by Fox because it may have been an objectionable word in some Spanish-speaking areas. The name Bung Honey was substituted, which is a rude-sounding but nonsensical term. Chinga was later brought back. It means fuck or a similar general expression of disappointment. Kim Anders gifted Jenny Lynn Hutchinson, who played Polly Turner, with the Chinga doll. If I were that kid, I would not be grateful for that at all, but okay. Uh, Wiki says, during filming, Jillian Anderson struggled with delivering her lines. She explained... The way the script was originally read to me initially seemed to me as if Scully's kind of stepped up to the plate and played along with the sheriff's humor. Thus, she performed her lines in a tongue-in-cheek manner before Carter called her and told her that her lines were not meant to be humorous. He also informed her that the production staff was having to edit out a lot of stuff to correct the issue. Several of the episode scenes were shot on location. For instance, the gas station scene was filmed at the a real gas station across from the series production headquarters. Likewise, the supermarket scene scenes were filmed in a real store named Shop Easy. The scenes required the supermarket to close before the holiday, the Christmas holiday, and be installed with upright freezers. Reportedly, during the self mutilation scene in the supermarket, a real customer stumbled onto the set, saw the commercial commotion, and hurriedly left in a panic. The death under glass scene featured Dave the Butcher with a knife in his eyes was created in post-production with the help of a computer. Special effects supervisor Lori Kelson George detested the scene on her 9 and 11 year old sons, explaining, I gauge a lot of the show by whether my kids can stand them or not. If they can't, I figure I succeeded. Chinga bothered them a lot. So basically this sounds like you're traumatizing your kids. That's cool. Uh, Chinga, the titular evil doll, was created by sewing together various doll parts. An oversized doll's head was then attached to the body and fitted with the world's largest wig. 
Most of the makeup effects were created by artist Toby Lindawa, who appreciated the chance to work on a Stephen King project. Anyway, that's all I got for you for this video. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there are a number of ways to do so. You can follow me on Twitter at Core Productions. You can join one of my Core Productions Facebook pages. You can buy something from the Core Productions store on Zazzle. You can buy me a copy, which is a new way to support content creators such as myself. And of course, you can like, share, and comment in this video as well as subscribing to my channel. This is Dave from Core Productions signing off.